السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته ازيكم يا شباب اخباركم ايه الترم ده ان شاء الله عندنا مادة انترودكشن تو استرونومي وهي مادة اونلاين كورس في اوشن زي ما انتم عارفين الاونلاين كورس بينزل لنا كل اسبوع اكتيفيتيز وتاسكس لازم نعملها ونسلمها في ميعادها عشان نقدر ان احنا نعدي المادة ديت فاحنا عندنا انتروداكشن تو استرونومي نازل لنا الاسبوع دوت موديول 1 موشنز ان ذا سكاي موديول 2 ذا اوريجن اوف مودرن استرونومي اللي بيبقى مطلوب مننا عاده في كل موديول ان احنا بيبقى عندنا فيه اساينمنت وفيه كويز وفيه ديسكشن الديسكشن احنا برضه بنكتبه اونلاين بيبقى فيه دايركت كونتاكت ما بينكم وما بين دكتور كريستن ميلر اللي هي الدكتور اللي في امريكا وانا شفت فيه ناس منكم كتير حلت الديسكشن وابتدت تتفاعل والدكتور علقت لها على بعض الحاجات وان شاء الله الجريدز بتنزل بتاعت كل اكتيفيتي او بتاعت كل ويك ويك باي ويك انا دوري معاكو ان انا ان شاء الله يعني هفصل لكم المين بوينتس اللي في موديول 1 وموديول 2 ونعمل فيها زي اونلاين ديسكشن كده بحيث ان احنا نقدر نحل الاساينمنت ونجاوب على الكويز ونفهم الديسكشن بتاعنا عايز ايه في كل موديول ان شاء الله تعالوا دلوقتي يا شباب نبتدي في موديول 1 اللي هو موشنز ان ذا سكاي موديول 1 عندنا مقسوم لجزئين بارت 1 ا يوزرز جايد تو ذا سكاي اند بارت 2 سايكلز اوف ذا سان اند مون تعالوا دلوقتي يا شباب نبدا في بارت 1 في موديول 1 عندنا اللي هو ا يوزرز جايد تو ذا سكاي وتعالوا نشوف المين بوينتس اللي عندنا فيه اللي من خلالها لما نقراها نقدر نفهم المين ايديا اللي عندنا في الموديول ونقدر نحل بعدها الاساينمنت والكويز والبارتيسيبيشن براكتس اللي عندنا Astronomers divide the sky into 88 constellations with modern boundaries defined by the International Astronomical Union IAU Also the constellations are originated in the middle in the Middle Eastern and the Greek mythology. The names are Latin, named groups of stars that are not constellations are called streams. The names of the stars usually come from ancient Arabic, so modern astronomers often refer to a star by its constellation and a Greek letter assigned according to its brightness within the constellation. Astronomers refer to the brightness of stars using the magnitude scale. The first magnitude stars are brighter than the second magnitude stars, which are brighter than the third magnitude stars, and so on. The magnitude you see when you look at the star in the sky is its apparent visual magnitude, MV which includes only types of light visible to human eye and does not take into account the star's distance from Earth. Flux is the amount of light energy that hits one square meter per second. A rigid definition of brightness, the magnitude of a star is related mathematically to the flux of light received on Earth from the star. In other words, the star brightness. The celestial sphere is a specific model of the sky to which the stars appear to be attached. Because Earth rotates eastward, the celestial sphere appears to rotate westward on its axis. The north and south crystal poles are the pivot on which the sky appears to rotate, and they define the four directions around the horizon, the north, south, east, and west points. The point directly overhead is the zines, and the point on the sky directly Underfoot is the nether. The celestial equator, an imaginary line around the sky above the Earth's equator, divides the sky into northern and southern halves. Astronomers often refer to distances on 
in the sky as if the stars, sun, moon, and planets were equivalent to spots painted on a plaster ceiling. These angular distances measured in degrees, arc minutes, and arc seconds are unrelated to the true distance between objects in light years. The angular distance across an object is its angular diameter. What you see of the celestial sphere depends on your latitude. Much of southern hemisphere of the sky is not visible from northern latitudes. To see that part of the sky, you'd have to travel southward or southward over Earth's surface. Circumpolar constellations are those close enough to a celestial pool that they don't rise or set. The angular distance from the horizon to the north celestial pool always equal your latitude. This is the basis for the celestial navigation. Precession is caused by the gravitational forces of the moon and sun acting on the equatorial bludge of the spinning earth and causing its axis to sweep around in a conical motion like the motion of the top's axis, earth's axis of rotation process with a period of 26,000 years, and consequently the celestial pools and celestial equator move slowly against the background of the stars. Now let's determine some scientific terms in these parts. Let's begin with constellations. In ancient times, people organized the night sky by naming stars by groups of stars, constellations after heroes, gods, and mystical peaks. The oldest constellation in Western culture organized 3,000 years ago in Assyria. Greek and Papalian astronomers added more. There are 48 ancient constellations still used today. Constellation boundaries were approximate or non-existent, so astronomers today have added 40 modern constellations, bringing the total to 88, with personally defined boundaries. Now a constellation presents an area of the sky and any star within that area belongs to a particular constellation. Second, we have to know that stars that appear close together can be at vastly different distance from Earth. Even so, the stars in a constellation or asteroid look close together from our point of view our viewpoint, these stars can be very far from each other and moving through space in different directions. We see stars that from the Big Dipper as if the stars were projected onto a screen. The names of the stars. Most of the star names come from ancient Arabic, with alternations along the way. For example, Betelgeuse, which is a bright orange star in Orion, comes from the Arabic Yad el Jawza, which means the hand of Jawza. Sirius means a scrocher and Alderban means the flower. Modern astronomers use the Greek letters to designate the alternative, the relative brightnesses of stars in a constellation. In general, the brightest star is usually designated alpha. There are, there are a few exceptions to this general rule because of tradition 
error for personal preferences of early of early chart, chart makers. A star is named by using a Greek letter followed by a possessive form of the constellation in which it is found. For example, the brightest star in Canis Major is Alpha Canis Majoris. The figure shows an example where the stars do not quite follow the rule of assigning Greek letters in the order of decreasing brightness. In Orion, Beta is brighter than Alpha and Kappa and Kappa is brighter than Eta. The brightness of the stars. The following figure presents how is the brightness of stars with the apparent magnitude. The apparent visual magnitude scale tells us how bright a star is when observed from Earth. The B presents visual, so this scale deals with the visual spectrum only. The stars also emit light in the infrared and ultraviolet parts of the spectrum. Humans cannot see these types of radiations. In this scale, the distance from an object to the Earth is not taken into account. Flux is the amount of light energy that hits a square meter in one second, as it defined before. Astronomers use flux to precisely measure the light energy that reaches the Earth from luminous celestial objects. Reasoning with numbers magnitudes. Now we will determine and understand how magnitudes are calculated. Through this slide, we will determine the relationship between flux ratio and the magnitudes that can be written as a formula. The ratio of the fluxes is equal to 2.51 raised to the difference in the magnitudes. Note that in the formula, the flux of a star A is in the numerator and the flux of star P in the denominator, but the power is the magnitude of a star P minus magnitude of a star A. This equation we will find it in the next slide. To find the answer to this equation, simply use the formula. The flux of light from star A is 336 times larger than the flux from star B. An example. Formula for flux ratio. Flux A over flux B equal 2.51 to the power magnitude P minus magnitude A. Example. If the magnitude difference is 6.32, what is the flux ratio? So, the flux ratio will be Fa over Fb equal to 2.51 to the power 6.32, which equals 336. This means the flux of light from star A is 336 time, times larger than the flux from star B. Cluster sphere. The cluster sphere. Ancient astronomers believed that the sky was indeed a great sphere. Modern astronomers know this is not true, but use the idea because it is convenient way to describe the sky. There are a few ideas to recognize when think of the sky as a sphere. For example, the sky appears to be rotating westward around the every 24 hours. But in fact, Earth rotates eastward. The Earth's rotations produces day and night. 
From any location on Earth, you can only see half of the celestial sphere, which is the half above the horizon. The zenith is the point on the celestial sphere directly above your head. The nadir is the point on the celestial sphere directly below your feet, which you can you cannot see because this is below the horizon. The north and south celestial poles are directly above the Earth's north and south poles. These are the apparent pivot point for the motion. Halfway between celestial poles is the celestial equator. The directions north, south, east, west are also defined. North and south points are the points on the horizon closest to the celestial poles. The east and west points lie halfway between the north and south points. Note that the celestial equator always meets the horizon at the east and west points. Astronomers measure distance across the sky as angle. Astronomers use the idea of angular distance to measure the distances between objects, and these distances are expressed in angular units such as degrees, arc minutes, arc seconds. These units are also used to measure the angular diameter of an object. If you think of the celestial sphere model, then you can imagine two lines, one going to each of two celestial objects. The angular distance between the two objects is the angle the imaginary lines make, as shown in the figure. The angular diameter of an object is the angular distance from one edge of the object to the opposite edge. The sun, moon are about the same angular diameter, about a half degree. Precession About 2000 years ago, Hippras compared the position of certain stars to their position two countries previously. He discovered that the celestial pools and equator are slowly shifting positions across the sky. This is due to the precession of the Earth. Imagine the Earth is a spinning top. If you are not ever played with a top, you may have noticed that. Even if the top of spinning very quickly, the axis of rotation is not stable. Its axis rotation sweeps out the shape of a cone, with its tip tracing the circumference of a circle. The top processes. The same thing happens with the spinning airs. The airs' rotational axis is tied at angle of 23.4 degrees from the vertical. The airs has a slight plug around its middle, and gravity of the sun and moon pull on this plug, causing its axis rotation. To twist upright relative to its orbit combined with Earth's rotation. This causes precession.